Hey there, and welcome back to another My Hero Academia video. And today I want to talk about the character of All Might and his place in the overall story of My Hero Academia. And, more specifically, how I think that his story is eventually going to play out. And as you might have realised from the title, I think All Might's going to die at some point. And to me, it almost feels like a foregone conclusion. That eventually, at some point, he has to bite the dust. Now, before we get properly started, I would like to say I'm probably going to talk about manga spoilers, so yeah, if you haven't read it and don't want to know what happens until the anime adapts it, this isn't for you. And with that being said, let's get started. When we're first introduced to the character of All Might, it's via the origin story of Izuku Midoriya, aka Deku, the main protagonist that the show follows. He's framed as the pinnacle of what it means to be a hero, the number one, a man who eliminated the majority of major crimes in Japan almost single-handedly during his tenure, and who personally inspired Deku, a little quirkless boy, to become the country's top hero. We then learn that All Might's essentially working on borrowed time. That his years of hero work and some devastating injuries have put a timer on how much longer he can continue to remain as the number one hero, or indeed how long he can even be a hero at all. He then basically gets set up as Deku's mentor figure, and his surrogate father figure, considering his actual dad has played basically no role in the story at all. He trains him and nurtures his heroic instincts and dreams, and eventually transfers him his powers, which allows Deku to successfully apply to UA, where he can train to become a hero. And from then on, we see him gradually lose his powers faster than ever, until it finally culminates in a big final confrontation, where his powers are lost for good, leaving him more vulnerable than ever, and needing to find a new meaning for his life. And this is achieved via doubling down on his mentorship role, not only to Deku, but to the other members of Class 1A. And if I've learned anything from anime, or just TV in general, it's that the older father figure type mentor character is always a safe choice to kill. And I think that from a story point of view, it makes a lot of sense. Ever since Deku was a little kid, he's looked up to All Might as the pinnacle of everything that's good and pure in the world. The symbol of peace who's there to make things right. He relies on his advice and he depends on him as an emotional anchor, somebody he can trust with his problems. And I think it would be a really interesting story point for him to lose that. Now we know that in the manga, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the story. And honestly, we've been pretty starved of big shocking main character deaths. There have been a few secondary characters biting the dust and a few near misses, but nothing really big enough to really shock you and change the characters on a fundamental level. But for Deku, this death will provide that final push he needs to really master his powers and prove himself as All Might's true successor. It would give him that push to really try to get rid of All For One for good, and judging by the direction that the manga's taking, attempt to redeem Shigaraki in a Darth Vader Luke Skywalker style twist towards the end. And on top of that, it also links back to Night Eye's statement about not being able to change the future. During the overhaul arc, Deku proved that he can in fact change things despite Night Eye's beliefs, successfully defeating Overhaul and not dying in the process. But I think it would be interesting to see that despite Deku's beliefs, Part of what Night Eye says still rings true. He can't save everybody. He can't always be the almighty savior, the conquering hero. He won't always be able to win. And I think that the death of his beloved mentor and hero would probably be the most dramatic and gripping way to go about proving that. And then, on top of that, Deku aside for a moment, it also provides a lot of story progression for other characters, most notably Bakugo and Todoroki. Like Deku, these two were also huge All Might fanboys when they were kids, albeit for different reasons. For Bakugo, All Might provided a target he could strive to surpass, and proof that strength creates success, and that being strong makes you a hero. Whilst for Todoroki, he was an escape from an abusive home life. A sparkle of hope that he could also become a hero without becoming as jaded and cruel as his dad is. That he could be better and make people feel safe, not scared. And so, building off of that, a death of this magnitude really allows all three of the primary protagonists to further develop, and gives them all even more personal motivation going forward, especially both Bakugo and Deku. Because currently, All For One and Shigaraki still feel like All Might's enemies. His arch-rival that killed his mentor, and the grandson of his mentor that he couldn't protect. They belong to his backstory, his life, not Deku's or Bakugo's. It's like Robin fighting the Joker. Yeah, they're enemies and all, but there's less of that connection. Killing off All Might gives them a much deeper hero versus villain bond and a personal reason to win against them beyond them simply being a hero and a villain. And I think ultimately, that'll help enhance the story even more. 
But beyond my belief that it would enhance the story being told for All Might to Die, what proof do I have? And honestly, apart from the stakes getting more intense as each new manga chapter releases, I really don't have all that much to go off. Although, if you'll bear with me, I'll spout off some tinfoil theory right now. So we know that the author is a bit of a Star Wars fan. You see it in place names and in All For One's evil mask design. Darth Vader much? Anyway, let's look at some parallels. In the first couple of seasons, All Might acts as Deku's Obi-Wan, an aging legend who's getting ready for one last big battle. And this moment, his Death Star moment, happens in the Kamino Ward battle, where All Might the hero dies, leaving All Might the man behind. And in a way, this is kind of like Obi-Wan's death. Because whilst he's still there for Deku, like Obi-Wan's ghost is still there for Luke, it isn't really the same as it was before. He can't be an active participant. And now we have All Might helping Deku come to grips with all the more cosmic, mystic sides of his quirk with the vestiges and the new abilities. So he's pretty much becoming Yoda. And spoiler alert, Yoda dies just before the final confrontation with the Emperor and Darth Vader. So that means if we follow this rule, all Might kind of needs to go before Deku can go up against Shigaraki and All For One in the end. Plus, our little parallel would be complete with Deku talking to All Might's vestige, aka his Force Ghost. And look, maybe it seems a bit out there, but honestly, I think it definitely has potential. And whilst my Star Wars references aren't strictly evidence that All Might's death is on the horizon, I think it shows how it could fit into the grand scheme of the story and really enhance both the plot and the character development. Plus, how cool would it be for the ultimate final smash to have all the one-for-all vestiges alongside Deku beating Shigaraki in the final battle? I feel like it's too good an opportunity to miss, whilst also feeling kind of organic and raising the stakes just right. But, as always, those are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. Do you think All Might's gonna die? Why? Or why not? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.